So we should have a window that we've created using uh, Kinter library and we have now added a logo to it. So there's a couple of extra things we want to put on the top here. The first one is the date would be useful to, you know, have the date on the form for the users to see. And uh, I also want to put on some uh, labels for, you know, some words to explain what's actually going on here and for descriptions of what's going on. So we're just going to take some time putting the date on. Uh, and then we'll get a, a title on it, and then that'll be it for this bit. And then in the next one, we'll do a few more labels. So again, remember that this window dot main loop always needs to be the very, very last line. So make sure you are above that, but we can be below the logo. Sometimes it's important where you put these things in in the order. Uh, other times, not so much. So we can just move to the next couple of lines down um, and what i want to do is use the time date time library that we imported up here at the top so you remember we said from date time import the date so we want to use the date, and it just gets the date from the system computer uh, but we need to tell it to grab the date and display it on a label a bit like we did with the logo so the first thing we need to do is put a little comment. Okay, we get used to putting these comments in. It, it really does help when we come back to look at it later on to figure out what everything's actually doing. So we can call this whatever we like. Uh, we need to create a variable to store the day, and I'm just calling this one today. Um, but it doesn't really matter as long as you don't use a, a word that python understands for something else such as date or time then it really doesn't matter so i can just call it today today's date something like that okay and then i want that to contain the the actual date so i want this variable to equal date dot today okay and python understands what that means it will go and grab today's date but then i need to extend this because I need to um, use strf time. And what this does is it tells the, um, the form what format we would like the um, time to be displayed. So it stands for string format time. So you could have the day and then the month and the year, or you could have the month and then the day and then the year like they have in America, or you could just, you know, there's just various uh, ways that you can display dates and times, but we want the one that we are familiar with in the UK. So single quotes. And then the way we do this is we say percent D, so that'll put the date in, and then we want a slash, then we want percent M that'll give us the month and then we want percent but this time we want a capital Y for the year and then we close the single quote we close the bracket so that's created a variable called today which is going to store today's date and time and format of that string in today month and then year with a couple of slashes right now we need a label to actually put this on so it's similar to the way we did the um uh, the logo a second ago but this time i'm going to give my label a name and everything that i put on here from now on in is going to have a name because it's going to make it easy for us to call these things up when we want to make changes to them later on doesn't really matter what you call it in all honesty um, I tend to start my labels with LBL underscore because I can easily spot straight away that it's a label. And this one's going to hold the date. So I can just call it LBL date. Okay. And then because it's a label, we need to do TK dot label with a capital L, same as we did before. So all labels are created this way. Then the same as before, we have to open the bracket and tell it to place that label on our window. And we want the text of that label to be what we stored in this variable here. So we just call today. Okay, so the text equals today. 
and I can change the font at this point because the font is, is quite small, the default font. Um, and the way you do this is you do font equals, and then in brackets, we tell it what font we want and what size font we want. So the name of the font goes in quotes, comma, and then the number, but the number doesn't go in quotes. So I could make it size 12, size 14, something like that. And because we've opened a bracket here where we started configuring this label, we need to make sure we close that bracket here. So whenever you open a bracket, so I've got one open here, one open here, we have to make sure we've closed those brackets. So it's a common mistake just to forget to put these extra brackets on the end or to put the brackets in the wrong place. So if it throws an error message, that's usually the first thing it's a good idea to check. Now, because we've um, stored this label in a variable, we use the name of that variable to pop this on the grid. Okay, so I want this to be slightly to the left of my logo. So if I put this in column zero, row zero, it's going to be underneath my logo, and I don't want that. So I want this to be in column one, so it moves to the right, but I do want it to be still in row zero. So it's next to the logo at the top, but to the right of that logo. Okay, now the other thing I can do, same as I did before, I can use a sticky so that it sticks it to the left. Uh, but the other thing I can do with these um, things is I can add a little bit of padding. And padding just puts some pixels of space on the x-axis and on the y-axis. And they can be used independently of each other. So if I just want it to come down a little bit from the top of the screen, so it's not right at the top, I can just say pad y and put 10 pixels in. And if I want to put a little bit of padding around the left and right sides of it, then I can do the same with pad X. And if you don't like it, you can just increase or decrease these numbers so that your padding, um, you know, gets bigger or smaller. So in theory, we should now be able to run this and providing everything is okay. Okay. Uh, my, my, uh mistake there i forgot to put dot grid okay and then that will put that on the grid so what we need to do now is run it and there we can see it's right next to the logo and because i put some padding it's got a little bit of space above a little bit of space below so it, it kind of looks okay there all right so that's it for the time and the date so the next thing we need is a button. Part of the project uh, requires that the person who uses this app is logged in. So we need to give them an option to log in um, and we will do that off a, a button. Now at the moment, this button isn't gonna do anything, but we are going to just create the button, but it will just sit there and it doesn't matter how many times we press it. It's not gonna do anything, but it will look like a button. So for the purpose of demonstrating, you know, uh, for a prototype, um, we can explain that there's a button here and what this button will do. Okay, so uh, again, let's bang a hashtag in there because we want this, you know, bit of an explanation here. So if you do want to make this work later on, it's easy for us just to come back and see actually that's, that's where my login button is there because I've put a little bit of a comment in. It makes it easier for us to find. Okay, so what we want then is to create a simple um, button. Okay, and buttons work much the same as labels. So if you can see how we did the label, we gave it a, a variable name and then we equal tk.label. We do the same thing here, but instead of label, we use button. 
So let's give it a, a sensible name. So again, because it's a button, it might be sensible to call it BTN something just as a visual reminder. And the button's for logging in. So I'm gonna just call mine BTN login. It doesn't really matter what you call it, as long as when you come to use it later on uh, in a function, for example, or when you put it on the grid, you, you just need to know what, what it's actually called. Okay, so uh, I'm going to use the TTK button. So we go TTK dot button. And then it's the same as we've done with everything so far. We have to then place that on the window. And then this time, instead of using a variable for the text, as we did with the logo and with the time, we're actually going to physically type something on the button. Okay, so I could just have something like login or, or, or something like that. All right, or if you wanted to make it maybe stand out a bit, you could possibly, you know, put a couple of asterisks either side or something like that. It's just text. It's just what appears on the button. Okay, so that creates the button and that puts a bit of text on it, but we still have to add it to the grid. So the same as before, we go button underscore login dot grid. Okay, and it's exactly the same as we've done with everything so far. We now have to tell it what row and what column do we want any padding and, and so on and so on. Okay, so I'm going to go row equals zero same as the other two because that's you know where i want it and next to the others but it's again going slightly to the right of this window so in this case we're going to put it in the third column but because it starts with zero it's actually going to be column two okay so what we've got so far is we've got the date on a label and now hopefully we've got a working button. So let's try it by running it and see. Okay, so you can see here, there's my logo, there's the time uh, and the date, sorry. And that will update automatically every time, you know, we, we, we run the thing, the date will change by itself. And we've got this login button that, as I said, we can press, but it doesn't really do anything at the moment. It, it's just there as a kind of feature, but we'll make it work later on.